What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. The PS Portal jailbreak situation has taken an ethical turn and it has divided the gaming community quite a bit. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what the person who jailbroke this, his name is Andy Nguyen, who I spoke about in a previous video. He's an information security engineer at Google and he created a jailbreak able to play PS Vita games on the PS Portal, which for those of you that don't know, the PS Portal is literally just a screen that plays information from your PlayStation 5, but it got found out that there's eight gigs of onboard storage and you can utilize that to put games and ROMs and emulators on it. He has since made a tweet coming forward saying, yeah, that whole jailbreak thing that I did, it's not gonna be available anymore. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down all the information, screenshots, links, and tweets about the people involved with jailbreaking the PS Portal. But for this video, let's go over what transpired. First off, this tweet came out initially on February 19th, 2024, and I covered it in a video saying, After more than a month of hard work, PPSSPP is running natively on PlayStation Portal. Yes, we hacked it with the help of XYZ and Zeta 2. And he shows a screenshot of his PS Portal playing Grand Theft Auto from PS Vita as a way to confirm that this was officially done. And while it did come out later on in the tweets that he was saying that it wasn't going to be released publicly and this is something that he doesn't plan on exposing for the whole community. I don't know. I read that initial tweet and it's kind of like one of those, man, that's pretty exciting. It kind of gives the vibe off that he might leak this out or tell some people about how they did it so that it finds its way to the hacker community, the jailbreaking community online, and anyone with a PS Portal could potentially use this information to play PS Vita games or potentially other emulators as well. But no, he followed that up with a tweet on April 2nd stating, we responsibly reported the issues to PlayStation. Bugs are fixed on 2.06. And while, yeah, I mean, if you're going to be an ethical hacker and you're going to find some exploits and report those to the companies and maybe even get paid a bounty, which he hasn't confirmed yet in any of the replies, and a lot of people have been asking that, which I think is a little bit strange, but most likely he received a bounty from Sony for reporting this exploit. And maybe he doesn't want to make that known to the community because he doesn't want to come across as a goody two-shoes hall monitor that just hacked this to make some money to make it even more secure against the hacking community to be able to, I don't know. I take a step back from all this and say, if you buy the device, you own the device. And I'm sure there's a lot of legal proceedings and a lot of court cases to decipher. Well, technically the code on the device you don't own, you just own the physical hardware and X, Y, and Z. My point being is if I buy something, I should be able to do whatever the hell I want to with it. That's kind of the perks of ownership, in my opinion, as long as you're not using it to impact or hurt others, which is where the whole ethical hacking comes in. And I mentioned this to Andy Nguyen in a response. I started out saying, you report this to Sony and then are surprised by the responses here. To which he replied, it guarantees a safe and legal disclosure to the public, which is a win-win for everyone. What approach would you have taken otherwise? Now, I would argue this is not a win-win for everyone. This is a win for you and a win for Sony, but it is a big L for the hacking community because your exploit that you found has now been patched out in the latest update. And I can confirm this because I played my portal last night and before I logged on to play Final Fantasy Rebirth, I ended up having to update it with this latest patch. I replied, did you find vulnerabilities beyond just PPSSPP installation? Could you foresee this leading to actual data leakage or financial information being stolen from the hack? If so, I totally get where you're coming from and I'd agree. 
If it's just a decade old plus emulator, nah, this is just fun for gaming. And I would say the majority of people would agree with me. If it's not harming anyone, if it's just to put a decade plus old emulator onto a new age device to be able to play these retro games, I personally don't really see an issue with that. And Andy replied, there's no magic trick to install PPSSPP. It requires exploiting a set of bugs, which I cannot simply drop on Twitter without consequences. And even if I did, PlayStation would easily be able to figure out all the steps involved and patch them. Fair enough. That's, I understand where he's coming from. He can't just be like, hey everyone, here's how you hack it, because that opens him up to some serious legal issues with a corporation like Sony. So I said, I'd argue if Sony could easily be able to figure it out, they would have done that in the first place. As it stands, it sounds like if you don't want consequences for what you accomplished, it would have done the community better just to remain silent and let people have their fun. And what I meant by that was, don't say anything to Sony. You told everyone that you found a way to hack this to put PPSSPP games on it. Why not just let the hacking community know that information is out there and give them something to try to find. That was my mentality with that tweet. But instead, Andy takes this information to Sony, tells them about it, how he did it, and they patch it to completely shut it down before people can even start to look for what the issue could have been. Andy replied, yes, they could have found the issues themselves if they spent tons of effort fuzzing and auditing all their code. But otherwise, you cannot simply patch something you don't know about. On the other hand, when exploit files are released, you can easily debug and reverse engineer. Which is very fair, and I said, that's definitely true. At least it would give owners the opportunity to create a workaround or not update their OS, etc. Meaning they'd know that they'd be able to do something first before it gets preemptively blocked by a patch, and then you can't go back in time and perform it on your PS portal. And I think that was the biggest issue that I took with this. And I know the community in general at large had big issues with this as well. If you go through his replies on this thread, there's not a lot of very happy people here. They're pretty ticked off. They're calling him a hall monitor or a goody two shoes or a bootlicker or going to the corporation, sucking up to them and giving your learnings, your expertise, your intelligence to a mega corporation instead of the people buying the console itself instead of the gamers, the people putting the money into the console itself and buying it and owning it for themselves. There are definitely two sides to this coin, and it's kind of interesting to see the perspectives on Twitter with people vehemently on one side of it, not being able to see the other side. And I try my best to showcase both perspectives and give my own perspective as well in these videos, but here's one that countered my perspective that I really appreciated. This one came from Crypto Connoisseur at Anon Hacker Soul, and they said, okay, so the outcomes are report it, patch it out, bounty gets paid, then people find out about it, or B, leak it, get a lawsuit from Sony, nothing else. What would you do after months of hard work? You know what? I get it. And it makes sense that he went this direction. The greater issue that I had with all of this might be the approach that Andy took with it about how it came out like, hey everyone, look what I was able to do. I hacked the PS portal. I put PSP games on it. This is amazing, but I'm not gonna release it publicly. And then a couple months go by and say, hey everyone, I told Sony about it. They patched it out so nobody could use it. Ha ha. Like it comes across as a little bit of a slap in the face to hackers and gamers out there that were kind of excited. I mean, I'll be honest. I was in the camp of, hey, I know he's not going to release this, but if he was able to figure this out with a team of other people, there may be other people out there that eventually figure it out as well and share it behind closed doors on the internet. And it makes its way public like most stuff always does on the internet anyways. That was my mentality going into it. And the frustration, I guess, came from how it got worded, how he revealed it, how it got informed, and everyone was like, oh, cool, that's exciting. And then it just gets shut down because he goes to Sony and gives them the information and most likely gets paid a bounty. But again, he has not confirmed that. But it is an interesting situation regardless of that. And 
again, I'm sure there are other ways around this, and I'm sure other bugs will be found that might be a backdoor entrance into creating this hack again, but this is a little bit of a letdown and a sad ending. Now, I get it if it was going to be hurting people financially or getting their personal information out there. Those kind of hacks, definitely not cool with. But this one's a fairly innocent hack. It's not hurting or impacting anyone. And like I've said to plenty of my friends, I don't necessarily hack my consoles because it ends up being far more effort and work than it's worth. It's something that's fun to do and you get to a means to an end of it and share it with people. But I mean, hell, you want to play PSP games? Buy a Steam Deck and add them onto that. Like, you can do it in other places. That's the issue that I had with this. And that's the situation with this hack. I just wanted to bring it to you guys and give you both sides of the discussion because there's definitely some strong opinions on both sides of that fence. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you want more information, check out SmashJT.com for all the links and references. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Smash, smash, smash.